Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video on Civilization VI. If you've played this game and you've attempted to build any kind of wonder whatsoever, you would know that wonders replace tiles. You know, they replace the tile. So let's say you got a grassland and you put the Great Library on it. Well, it's no longer a grassland tile that yields anything or you can't put a farm on it. It's the Great Library tile. So when you know you're playing this game and you replace these tiles you know it's very different compared to all the other civ games because on the other civilization games you don't replace the tiles you know and even in them um civilization 2 has this wonder okay it's called king richard's crusade where all the tiles that give you production give you one more production so and you don't even know it's there you know and so um what i want to talk about today is whether or not this is like a good thing, a bad thing, how it affects the game, and we're gonna start by affecting the game. This affects the game a lot, especially on an archipelago map. So an archipelago map, all of the water-based wonders, like the Sydney Opera House and the Colossus, I mean, they're easier to build, right? Because there's more coast tiles, you know? And um, Venetian Arsenal is easier to build because there's more coast tiles. But especially with Gathering Storm now, you have this flooding going on. And so already the sea level's rising. If you're on an archipelago, you're losing buildable land. And now you have to deal with these wonders getting rid of yield tiles. And so I think it makes archipelagos a lot more competitive and a lot more, I would say, strategic. It's very strategic, you know? I was playing an archipelago map and it also I had it randomly generated. It also spawned a lot of mountains and hills. So like, I would say a good quarter of my buildable land was actually just mountains, you know? I mean, it was nice, you know, I could build things that were mountain-based wonders, but, like, I never ever saw a rainforest tile, so any of the rainforest build wonders I couldn't build. I only had one, I only found one lake tile in the whole place that I was near, you know? So I could only build, I think it's Chichen Itza that builds there. Um, I think that replacing tiles is a very, very good thing. Because it offers you a risk versus reward, right? So the first risk, obviously, is you're building a wonder, right? You can only have one, and if someone builds it, you know, you get screwed over. So what also happens is you build it over a forest, or you build it over one of your mines or farms. If you lose the wonder, well, you also lose the farm or the mine, you know? So it's kind of like an extra little risk that you have to spend a builder charge, or if it's Panama Canal too, builder charges to take this thing and fix it you know fix this mess that you've created I like it I like that kind of risk versus reward I also think it balances the game out because you can get some pretty strong tiles in Civ 6 you know especially with the the farming where you can you know put the farms in that little triangle that you get from feudalism and they all produce more, then you have a flooded river, it produces more, then you get replaceable parts and your farms produce more, and all of a sudden, like, your three farms on the floodplain river produce more food than all the tiles did in the beginning of the game. You know, so I think it kind of balances out that way. I also think that having the tiles have to be placed on things adds for some really dynamic gameplay, right? Like, the pyramids have to be built on a desert, right? You can't just, like, build the pyramids. So, to build the pyramids, you have to build a desert, a city with a desert spot in them. Or Petra, you know, you gotta build a city with a decent location, and everyone could fight over that Petra location. I have a file where I have a really good Petra city where I got lucky, and it's, like, my best city. You know, it just happened that way. So I like that there's the terrain requirements. I like that it's not just, oh, the city needs to be on a coast, right? Because that's, that's like how the Colossus and the Great Lighthouse have worked always is, oh, city's got to be built on a coast. And you don't really need that anymore. And I don't remember if there, if there was terrain requirements in Civ 5 or 4. But anyways, yeah, I think that Wonders Replacing Tiles, pretty cool decision. I like that, especially in Archipelagos, if there's flooding, you also have to pick, okay, do I want my districts flooded or do I don't want my wonders flooded? You know, you have to pick all of that and it's a really tactical decision. If you know you're in a tight race where, you know, you want to build this wonder, but it gets rid of like a mine over a decent spot, you got to make that decision. 
You know, it adds the intensity of decision making. I'll take the risk. You're going to risk it, you know? Um, so let me know what you think about Wonders replacing tiles in the comments below. Do you think it's a good or bad thing? I like it. I like it. I think it makes it more competitive and more risky for sure. I'm Pacific Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.